a proton pack is not a toy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack is Not a Toy. My name is Matt. And when I first started this channel a couple of years ago, I wanted to have a place to show off some of the things in my Ghostbusters collection. I wanted to show off my Proton Pack to some people who had not seen it before, uh, answer some of those questions that I always seem to get anytime I had my pack out in public. And then that grew into doing things like tutorials and product reviews and then what you guys are familiar with here today. And early on, I really wanted to base my approach on the way that I do my videos after the way Alex Newborn does his videos on his channel, Lex the Robot, here on YouTube. And you most definitely should subscribe to his channel if you have not already. He's a must-follow for any Ghostbusters fan. But he has a very uh, cool narrative approach on the way that he handles his videos. It's just a guy talking to... His audience and if he has something cool to show off then he explains you know background behind it why how it fits into the Ghostbusters universe uh, who, how he went about getting it or why he wanted it uh, people that helped him along the way maybe a cool story or a tidbit here or there and I uh, always find it very interesting and he was the first person that really caught my attention as someone who collected Ghostbusters props that were beyond the ones we think of as Ghostbusters props. So beyond the proton pack, the ghost trap, the ecto goggles, the PKE meter, the flight suit, things that we always think of, things into like the real world items that were used on screen like the Vinkman shock box, the sniffer, Ray's camera, some of the hard hats from Ghostbusters 2 or from the Con Ed guy in the first Ghostbusters movie, um, Janine's phone, all the things on her desk, the firehouse alarm bell, magazines and books that you see in the hands of characters in the background, things that, like I said, existed in the world that still exist in the world today. And if you look hard enough, you could probably buy one and then you could have that Ghostbusters item in your collection. And I always thought that was cool. And one of the things that fits that category that Alex has shown off starting back in 2019 was the miniature or toy police car that ended up being what they used for the scene where Mr. Stay Puft arrives and attacks New York at the end of the first Ghostbusters movie. Now, it's been noted that they couldn't decide on whether Mr. Stay Puft was going to be 100 feet tall or 125 feet tall. And so Ivan Reitman said, split the difference, we'll call him 112 and a half feet tall. Which made things a little difficult for the production team when it was time to buy some scale cars or other vehicles to put around its feet when they were trying to film that scene because there weren't models available in that scale, but they did find these police cars that fit the bill and so i think they're one eighteenth scale something like that and for a toy they looked basically as good as a model would and so they took some of them and used them as police cars and then they changed some of them into taxi cabs and i believe some civilian vehicles or whatever and so if you go back and you look at them shooting that scene you can see some of these cars scattered around his feet and um, Alex started showing some of those off when he started buying them in 2019. He bought a handful of them with the idea of making something or some of them into some uh, taxi cabs and then taking the best parts off of some of the ones that weren't in great shape and making the best police car that he could out of them. And um, I always thought, hey, if I could find one that's good enough shape where I don't have to do all the Frankenstein stuff with it, and I might buy one as well. And it was brought back to my attention. He made another video uh, this year, three or four months ago, about one that had an orange interior that he had bought. And I finally, I've been friends with him for years now on Facebook, and I reached out to him. I said, hey, what is the uh, product name for that police car so that I can kind of look for it on, on eBay as well? And he gave it to me. It's the New Bright Police Pursuit Vehicle Force 440. And um, that was, like I said, it was three or four months ago. And so after he showed his video, then I, I entered that into my save searches there on eBay. And 
one one day popped up and it had an orange interior and it was in great shape and it was 50 bucks and i had a birthday coming up and so i bought it and so i've been sitting on this for a while i've been wanting to show it off on a video for uh, quite a while but i was waiting until i was done with the Vinkman conversion series and so i this like i said i gave this to myself for my birthday which was over a month ago at this point but uh, i wanted it to show it to you today and then finally be able to put it on a shelf somewhere in the background now that i've done a video about it so this is the box that came in and pardon the noise and again this was something i normally wouldn't have spent 50 bucks on i don't know if it's a good deal or not i showed it off to alex he said it was gorgeous a decent deal but as i look at it the only real defect i, I can find with it is I put batteries in it and it doesn't lights don't come on the electronics don't work and it said that in the ebay auction in the listing so i knew that i think in the packaging process the antenna back here got a little bent but i'm not going to be worried about that the little trap door for the battery likes to fall down uh, when it does not have batteries in it so that'll probably happen while i'm holding it here at some point on the video but as you see it does have that so it does have that orange interior and i didn't necessarily need one with the orange interior but after he said it was rare and did say that it was one that fit the bill as a screen use variety then I had to pull the trigger on this one and from what i can tell all the little parts that he commonly shows hey this part's broken off i'm gonna have to fix this or bring this one from this other one um, to make a good car out of it um, to me it looks great all the chrome looks good decals are still in decent shape and as you can see it's not a new york city police car it says interstate police patrol on there but from a distance at the feet of a giant monster that your attention's drawn to anyway you're not noticing that it doesn't say hey that doesn't say nyc police on it um it was good enough for them uh, so i'm really happy to have one of these in my collection i have seen these before um i have come across one in person before there was a table at the planet hollywood in disney springs when my family went there in uh, 2017 we took a vacation to orlando and when we went there uh, they had all kinds of stuff including um, props and costumes and there was one table it was kind of like a shadow box table it was a table and it was sunken in with a glass on top where you could see what was underneath and it had some Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 items in there and two of them one was a police car and one was a yellow taxi cab so I'm assuming that they were production used ones that were there in that table so I have come across those in person and then um, one of these that was screen used um, or production used it didn't actually make it into the movie was sold a couple of years ago at a prop auction and it was one that they had um, demolished and smushed as if Mr. Stay Puft had stepped on it and completely wiped out the police car. And that was uh, bought by, I have his name written down, Lauren White, who has been uh, mentioned in some of the videos that Alex has done on these police cars. He's a collector of these as well. So he has that one, uh, which is very cool. But I'm happy to have this in my collection now. And um, it would have been cool if the, the sirens and stuff worked and the lights would flash. But it's not something that's necessary. But again, I'm happy that I don't have to do anything with it. It was just basically buy it, put it on the shelf. And you have, for what it's worth, one of the police cars from the Mr. Stay Puft scene in Ghostbusters. 
So thank you to Alex for not only just giving me the information so that I could get one of these and add it to my collection, but for always being willing to have those conversations with me and entertain my questions, uh, even going back to when we used to do like the Ghostbusters Lego thing there on GB fans. Um, we need more people in the community like Alex Newborn, and I've, that's one of the reasons I've tried to pattern some of the things on my channel after his, uh, being willing to be open and uh, connect with other people that watch your channel or are interested in the same things that you are. Um, he's a good guy to look up to here in the Ghostbusters community. We need more people like Alex Newborn. So I uh, appreciate you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the like button if you did and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.